YouTube, Lenny Sly, RoadWarriorTC.com. I'm back. This is the first video um, in a long time that I'm actually making specifically for YouTube. As you probably noticed on my channel, I've uploaded a few of the online classes that I've done for the Master Intention Nine Keto platform. If you're not familiar with that, go to RoadWarriorsTC.com, go to our online dojo. If you're interested in checking out those videos, sign up, become a member. We, uh, I just uploaded probably about 150, over 150 new videos over the past three months um, on the subject that was just mentioned. Today's going to be really different than what we normally do. This is going to be an Aikido defense off of the clinch. Now, let me throw this out there. I am not a professional MMA fighter, okay? So, what I'm doing with the clinch might not necessarily be how it's actually technically performed with actual MMA fighters that train in MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or whatnot. This is based off of my knowledge of my experience in real world application of how the clinch normally would happen on the street. Because once again, I, I constantly have to reiterate this to all the people out there that are so fucking delusional about what happens in the real world. Okay, you're not gonna fight a trained fighter in the real world. Plain and simple. It's just not gonna happen. So before you start making um, disparaging comments or, or saying just stupid shit to begin with, you know, hold off. Take things into consideration here before you start trying to rip apart a video that you probably are not gonna understand how the technique works in the first place because you're one of those guys that just like to critique and then say, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, when you more than likely clearly don't have any clue of what works and what doesn't work. Because um, if you did, you'd have your own YouTube channel and you'd be putting up your own videos and you'd be, sh you'd be sharing your knowledge with the world like how I do. Um, so with that being said, sit back, relax, and uh, we'll be back in a second. there's gonna be questions that arise, how did you end up in the clinch, whatever. From my experience, the majority of street fights tend to end up on the ground, um, given ser uh, several different reasons. Some people are better ground fighters, they, they have wrestling skills, whatever, they have minute wrestling skills. Some people, you get into a competition with somebody that's bigger, stronger, faster, that is gonna have an advantage over you by smothering you on the ground, that's a good way of getting your ass kicked, so obviously you wanna to try to avoid going down going to the ground as much as possible. So what I'm gonna to show to you today is I'm gonna show you how to work the MMA style clinch, have you, off of applying an Ikkyo technique, okay? How would Ikkyo be effective against an MMA style type of clinch? Okay, so I have Rod here today. Hey, oh, you got your So, let's do the position really quick. So we get in that position of, you know, here comes whatever. You get into that fight, okay, and you're, you're in this clinch. Now there's this struggle that's going on. People are going to be looking for knee strikes. They're going to be looking for elbow, you know, or excuse me, uppercut strikes to the rib. He's going to be striking. You know, you want to keep your head close to his head so he doesn't start headbutting you. So you keep this close. You can't do anything with this hand. So you have to get the hand that's on your neck. Now he's trying to pull my head down. Okay, he's trying to get in this position to pull my head down. So to where maybe he's setting up for a knee strike to the face or whatever. You want to take control over this. So how would Ikkyo work in this situation? Real simple. Two points of contact, okay? 
He cannot control or resist against two points of contact at the same time. His hand is on the back of my head trying to pull my head down. Obviously, I'm resisting against that. Here's the struggle. Your hand, which is free, you can soften them up by hitting, or you can go right up underneath and get the elbow and apply this and turn right into the equal lock and then have this standing type of arm lock, pin, whatever have you, to end the situation, to end the actual confrontation of this. So here it comes again, boom, right away. You're moving right up into this. You're 10 counting, you're taking a hand off, there's the pin. Now normally, I would move into this pin, into this standing pin. This is what we normally do. This pin buries him and causes pain in the elbow because I'm applying pressure on the elbow. I'm applying, which appears to be a Nikyo wrist lock, and I'm turning this against the rotation of his wrist and applying that. Then I'm releasing from there. So let's do it from this side. Same side of that though. So you're moving in. You have this, you're looking for possible throws, whatnot, okay? Go that way with the camera. That's why I'm doing it this way, so they can see it this way. Okay? So from here, you move up. So you have that. If he's still holding on to your arm, that's fine. As long as you have this point, this is where he go happens. And you apply. Okay? Same side. So here comes the punch. Struggling with this, looking for possible strikes. You're moving up with this. There it is. There's the pen. Then you can move to this secondary pen if you want. But once you have this, you don't need to do anything else. Now, there's a couple added things that you can do with this. Okay? You get into this and you roll this up. I can roll this to here and lock this up this way and take him down to the ground by still holding that. That's almost a little <coughs> far-fetched to do, but in the heat of the moment, the heat of the struggle, you usually go to the path of least resistance. So once you have this application and you're moving up here, okay, if this is still in this position, this is an option. Okay, it's an option. Now you can throat strike, whatever. You can leg sweep, you can punch. He can still punch. You can move back with this, drop him right on your knee. Whatever. It's just, these are just options. Nothing's engraved in stone, but wherever the technique leads you, that's, you're going to want to follow that. So that's not really what this is based upon. This is based upon the idea of getting his clinch and getting the Nikyo movement to where you're locking this out and you're applying Nikyo. Okay? One more from this side. So seriousness comes in, right? Good. So you know, what if he... He has this locked up pretty good. Squeeze tight, squeeze tight, harder, harder, harder. Pull. How am I going to get this up now? I'm not. Because he has my forehead, side of my head on his shoulder. So if he's pulling down hard, I have to figure out how to resist this, pull this up to where I can get this elbow. I get the elbow, now it changes. Okay? Again? Come in strong. Come in strong. I gotta be able to get this up. Then from here, I gotta be able to move this. So once I get this ikyo, I can apply that and lock them out. Okay? Again? So, yes, yeah, so that was good. See now, here we got this. Punch. Now you got them even stronger. Got them in the ribs because you didn't see it coming. So you wanna do whatever you can to soften them up. This can. This can lead into just tons of stuff. This is just one example of how this can work off of the clinch right away. See now, granted, this, you can't do this in MMA, because I'm sure this is illegal, but you can, spin, you can skin pinch right away and move into this position to where you can lock him up or whatever, okay? That's gonna disrupt his energy of the attack and his intent, moving through, getting this ego movement right away what you want to be able to do and get into the ego. If you want to look at the traditional standpoint of this, now you can get into that traditional pin, which I don't ever do anymore because it's useless, it doesn't work. This is where you want to be. If you need to control further, you can do this, or you can step on the hand and you can apply it this way. 
Why would you bother? I don't know. From the Ikea that I came from, that last thing that I showed is a favorite of my former sensei. It's, at some point you have to look at what you're doing and go, that's overkill. You know, having them down with that Ikeo pin and applying that, that does the job. I don't think you need to go any further than that. Tighten one more. So strong, going in, you're strong. You're focusing on, remember, so you start turning, start moving, start moving. So you're looking for this, trying to find this movement. This isn't gonna work, this isn't gonna work. You gotta get that thumb in there and roll this up. So you gotta roll this up, eat yo, and move right into that and apply the ego. At that point, you don't need to do anything else. Hey, hey. So, that's just a little taste of what I have in store for you guys, especially the upcoming videos. A couple things. This is my Aikido, okay? This is what I develop, this is what I train in. What works for me might not work for you. And I understand that, okay? I get a lot of people that like to make comments about how, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, or that's not Aikido, that's not the principle of Aikido. You guys haven't figured it out by now. I'm not living off of the philosophy of the love, peace, and harmony, the spiritual side of Aikido. I don't live that way, okay? The truth of the matter is, traditional Aikido is very ineffective in the real world. If you don't have practical principles in place, if you're not training towards real world attack, and you're working on techniques that's useless, you have no business training that, okay? In my opinion, if it doesn't work, why are you training it? You're seeking this knowledge to try to find this uke-nage relationship, okay? This internal connection between your partner, okay? You're gonna be seeking all the way to the day that you die to find those answers on how to make some of these techniques work. If it's not practical, if, it's, if it doesn't work in a practical form, what is the point of training it? You're wasting time on something that's useless when you can be taking the time and energy and applying it to something that is useful. Okay? Food for thought. Do what you want. I'm definitely gonna do what I want, okay? And I'm never gonna let anybody tell me how to do anything when they're doing nothing at all, okay? So that's for all you naysayers out there, okay? And I tend to try to stay away from even commenting about naysayers because personally, I don't even think that you should be given the satisfaction of, of anything for that point. Because if you're not doing anything to actually progress something and make it better, then you know what, then you, you're just a part of the problem, you're not a part of the solution. And if you have the solution, then grow some hair on your fucking chickpeas and make a video and put it up on YouTube for the rest of the world to see so then everybody can critique, critique what you're doing, which is probably gonna be shit in the first place. Okay, because when I get a lot of people that comment about what I'm doing, but they don't have the balls to get out there and actually do a video, that tells me a lot of things. You're either fat, out of shape, you're not skillful with what you do, but your mouth does a lot of talking, but you can't back it up, okay? I put myself out on YouTube, all over social media, I make myself very vulnerable to all the trolls out there and all the naysayers and everybody thinks that they know, okay? If you know something, why aren't you sharing it with everybody else such as I am, such as Rokas, such as a lot of other people that are out there doing it, okay? Stop talking shit and start executing, because that's all that I'm seeing right now all over social media is everybody running their mouth, talking about what needs to be done, but nobody's executing, okay? Real simple, shut the fuck up. Stop talking about doing, execute, because that's what we need. We need execution, we don't need panel discussions and discussions about, oh, well, this needs to change, that needs to change. We don't need that. We already know what needs to change. Stop talking and start doing. That is the only way something is gonna turn around for the better and grow. And it seems like, and it's, it's very apparent that I'm really the only one that's truly doing that with Rokas on the tail end of this, okay? That guy has a lot of heart. I have a lot of respect for him with what he's doing. He's definitely making a, a very serious and conscious effort to grow his Aikido into something that, that he thinks that he needs and that he wants. And I'm doing the same thing, like I said, this is my expression of Aikido. Whether you like it or not, I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. So you can take what I have with a grain of salt or however you wanna do it, 
can add it to your repertoire of technique and grow from that. Be innovative, be creative. You know, everybody's still stuck on this whole preserving the art form of Aikido. You know, there's nothing to preserve. Either change what you're doing or it's eventually gonna change you. Because you won't have no choice, okay? Get with the times, people, because 1969 was a long time ago, and I really haven't seen jack shit happen since then. So, if you liked the video, hit a thumbs up for me. Drop a comment down below. I'd appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. It costs nothing. Subscribe. When the bell icon comes up, hit that too so you can get all the new notifications when I post up new videos because there's going to be a lot of new videos that are going to be coming in the, in the near future. Plus, I'm getting ready to launch two things. I'm not going to go into detail about them, but I'm getting ready to launch another YouTube channel. Well, actually, I'm not getting ready to launch a YouTube channel. Somebody else is getting ready to launch a YouTube channel, and we'll make an announcement about that. And then we have something even bigger in the making that we are going to start on a small scale and see if we can get it to a global scale and that is going to be a first of its kind Aikido global thing. So nobody else has done it. As a matter of fact, I don't think anyone's doing it in the martial art community, but that's what we got going on. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.